All right, let's talk a little bit about electrolytes and extent ionization as we move towards writing chemical reactions. Remember, aqueous solutions consist of a solute dissolved into water. The, the solutes can be classified into three basic categories. The non-electrolytes that don't ionize at all or very, very little in solution. Covalent compounds like sugar, water, carbon dioxide are examples of non-electrolytes. Since water is not an electrolyte, ions generally need to be dissolved to get any significant electrical conductivity. For example, if we look at our friend table sugar or sucrose C12H22O11, when we, and that's a solid, when we dissolve that into water, we just get sucrose, it's still just a molecule, but it's AQ, meaning it's dissolved in water. So that's not an electrolyte. Stronger electrolytes are solutes that conduct electricity extremely well in most dilute solutions, and that's because they're completely or almost completely ionized in dilute aqueous solutions. Examples would include strong water-soluble acids like hydrochloric or nitric. We'll give you a list of those in a minute. Strong water-soluble bases like some of your alkali metal hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, so on. Water-soluble ionic salts, sodium chloride, calcium bromide, etc. But what you notice is that when HCl is dissolved in water, the HCl gas is also in water and you form H plus and Cl minus. Notice there's a one directional error. Everything's going to products or pretty doggone close. And then sodium hydroxide, while it is a strong base, it is a water soluble salt as well. But it ionizes it forms sodium plus hydroxide minus. Notice it's forming separate ions out in solution. Calcium bromide solid forms calcium 2 plus aqueous and 2 bromide ions. In this case, you need to be especially cautious of the stoichiometry because if you got more than one ion, it'll be a coefficient on the product side. Weak electrolytes are solutes that have they conduct electricity poorly in dilute aqueous solutions because they only partially ionize. The ionization is typically less than 10%. Your weak acids are going to be things like acetic acid, hydrofluoric acid, phosphoric acid. So those are weak acids. Your weak bases, ammonia, or some of your sparingly soluble bases like magnesium hydroxide. Some dissolve, so you get some ions, but many of your metal hydroxides are not terribly soluble, which we'll talk about. And there are some water-soluble covalent salts, which is not terribly common for this level of chemistry, so we'll kind of gloss over that one. So if we take acetic acid, and notice it can be written in the COOH form, as in bullet point one, or down here in the reaction, where you see C2H3O2 being the acetate ion. First, you see more in organic chemistry and in general chemistry, you see the other. You should learn to recognize both. But notice I've got double arrows because the reactions form products, the two ions, H plus and H, C, C2, H3O2 minus, but they can go back to form the reactants. And ammonia reacts with water to form ammonia minus hydroxide ion, but they can re-react to form the ammonia. And you will get some of those ions, but usually less than 10% ionization. We don't really get a whole lot. But you get some conductivity electricity, but not a huge amount. Okay, if we look at these three light bulbs, you can see the one to the far left is off. It's because its electrodes are down in a solution of either pure water or or there's a non-electrolyte like our table sugar dissolved. So the I've got an open circuit. In the middle, there's a weak electrolyte like acetic acid or vinegar. And you can see that's glowing some, but not really bright. That's because I have some ions to conduct electricity, but not a whole lot. And now I've got a bright bulb like from a solute like, say, table salt. So we mentioned weak acids and strong acids and strong bases and weak acids and weak bases. So how do you know? Acids are substances that generate H plus in aqueous solutions. Strong acids ionize 100% water, like our friend HCl ionizes to H plus and Cl minus. 
as you get to more advanced chemistry, you find that that H plus doesn't truly exist by itself in water. And so the HCl donates its hydrogen to water and you form H3 plus and Cl minus. H3O plus is called the hydronium ion. But your strong acids, you need to memorize this list. HCl is hydrochloric acid, HBr is hydrobromic acid, HI is hydroiodic acid, HNO3 is nitric acid, H2SO4 is sulfuric acid, HClO3 is chloric acid. That one's kind of on the line, but most books include it. And HClO4 is perchloric acid. All those are strong acids. Remember that list. Weak acids usually ionize 10% or less, like a weak electrolyte, like our friend acetic acid. Acetic acid ionizes in the form H plus and then the acetate ion. Now, there's, here's some common weak acids, but unlike the strong acid list, the weak acid list is much more extensive. And so that's why I said memorize the strong list. If you know the strong list, the weak ones are on the strong list. And so if you see an acid that's on the strong list, you know it's weak. So you can see things like hydrofluoric acid, acetic acid or vinegar, hydrocyanic acid, nitrous acid, carbonic acid, sulfurous acid, phosphoric acid, oxalic acid, and the list can continue on. Strong bases, like the strong acids, are strong electrolytes and ionize 100% in water. However, they produce hydroxide ions instead of H+. Your common strong bases are mostly group 1A metal hydroxides, lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, rubidium hydroxide, cesium hydroxide. The heavier group 2A metal hydroxides are considered strong, calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, and barium hydroxide. For example, the sodium hydroxide ionizes is completely informed sodium plus and hydroxide minus. I will tell you the group 2A metal hydroxides water solubility is not as high Barium is perhaps a little bit more than the other two, but it's they're pretty low. I mean, other metal hydroxides are not considered strong because they're not terribly water soluble. Weak bases are weak electrolytes and they produce hydroxide ion in aqueous solution. But again, usually less than 10% ionization. Ammonia is a pretty common one. Ammonia plus water go into ammonium hydroxide, ammonium ion and hydroxide ion. Your sparingly soluble bases, those that aren't terribly soluble, do ionize a little bit, so you do get a little OH in solutions, so they are modestly basic solutions. If we look at these and identify these as strong electrolytes, weak electrolytes, or non-electrolytes, we look at A, sodium sulfate is a strong electrolyte because it is a water-soluble salt. HCl, as we mentioned, was a strong acid, so it is water-soluble, or it, it's a water-soluble strong electrolyte, so again, strong acid, strong electrolyte, H3PO4. Now, it's water-soluble, but it is a weak electrolyte because it wasn't on the strong list. It was, in fact, it was in our weak acid, or weak acid list. Now, carbon dioxide is a non-electrolyte because it is a covalent compound. Looking at the next one, we want to identify these as strong acids, strong bases, weak acids, or weak bases. So HNO3 is nitric acid. That's a strong acid. It was on the strong list. CH3COH is acetic acid, so that is a weak acid. Ammonia is a weak base, and sodium hydroxide is a strong base. Now let's look at water solubility. There are some rules. How do I know whether a salt's water soluble or not? The one in the previous problem was, but how do you know that? Here's some basic rules. Acids are water soluble. Ammonia is soluble. So if you see those, soluble. Group 1A metal ions like sodium and potassium are soluble, but the other alkali metals are too. And ammonium compounds all, tend to be soluble with very very few exceptions. Nitrates and acetates are also soluble. Now the other ones are, it's gonna be like this except for when this happens. So chlorides are soluble except for silver chloride, mercury chloride, lead chloride is slightly soluble or sparingly soluble as we find. Bromides are soluble with a very similar list of exceptions. 
where the mercury two bromide is slightly soluble. So you have to look, what's it, what is it generally? And then is it one of the exceptions? Iodides, generally soluble with a very similar list of exceptions. Sulfates are soluble except for lead sulfate, mercury sulfate, strontium sulfate, barium sulfate, silver and calcium sulfate is slightly soluble. Sulfides and the ones below it are things that are generally insoluble. Sulfides are really insoluble except for group 1A, 2A, and the ammonium ion, those ones tend to be soluble. Hydroxides tend to be soluble except for your group 1A metals and barium, strontium, and calcium hydroxides are slightly soluble, but are still considered strong bases. Carbonates, phosphates, sulfites are insoluble except for group 1A and ammonium. So let's look at, and then carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide gases are slightly soluble. You don't get much solubility on gases at all unless you put them under pressure. So let's determine whether these are soluble or not at room temperature. Calcium sulfate. So let's look at the rules, calcium sulfate. So we scroll back up. Sulfates are generally insoluble. Calcium sulfate stated in rule seven was slightly soluble, so we'd consider that slightly soluble. Ammonium sulfide, sulfides are usually insoluble, except for your alkali metals, your alkaline earth metals and ammonium, according to bullet point eight. And so that since that's ammonium, that is soluble, lead nitrate, we said all nitrates were soluble, so hey, that one's gonna be soluble. And silver iodide, you can see it's an iodide, so if we scroll back up and look at the rules, iodides are soluble, except for an up silver iodide is the last one, or is that first exception? So we can say silver iodide, not very water soluble.